morning, Your Holiness. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. It's uh, it's wonderful really to welcome you, Your, Your Holiness, to the the fifteenth annual Happiness and Its Causes conference. It's um, you know we're really grateful and, and honoured that you, Your Holiness has participated in this conference mm. you know, as a regular uh, uh, guest for many time, many times since two thousand and five. And many times when you visit us, visited Australia and now virtually from your home there in, da- in Dharamshala. <clears throat> so, uh, Your Holiness, we are joined by an audience of 7,000 people. Yes. So I'd like to warn... We, we are joined by uh, an audience of several thousand people. Uh, I, I am the Tony Steele, a director of Happiness and its Causes, and I'd like to extend a warm invitation to all of our audience today. Your Holiness, these people, our audience come from many different walks of life, from you know, health professional groups like healthcare, psychology, education, and some business, and just from Australia and all over the world. So we are looking forward to uh, you know, an interesting conversation today. And... Joining us uh, will be Professor Ian Hickey. uh, um, Professor Hickey is a professor of psychiatry. He's the co-director of the Brain and Mind Centre of the University of Sydney. And here in Australia, he is a well-known media commentator on mental health issues. So welcome, Ian. Thank you for the opportunity and so great to have your holiness with us. Thank you. Thank you. So, His Holiness, I thought, you know, I'd like to start our conversation with a question to you and, and then perhaps afterwards I can ask Ian to provide his reflections on that. Your Holiness, Your Holiness will be aware that the world is going through a particularly difficult time at the moment. That, and here in Australia... Things started badly with the bushfires devastating many parts of the country, um, which was you know, in, resulting in many loss of much loss of life, particularly in the animal and the animal world. And then we followed that up quite closely by the, with the pandemic. So you know, so during this time, this year particularly, you know, people have suffered from anxiety, not just about their physical health, but also you know, long periods of. Uh, social isolation and separation. We've had some quite long periods of lockdown, particularly in in Melbourne, where you have visited you know, many times, where they where they were locked down and virtually confined to their homes for nearly three months. So my question, Your Holiness, is you know in times such as this, mm. which we are experiencing. In, my question is in times such as this, you know how can you know, what advice can you give us in to deal with the the anxiety? from the effects of isolation uh, and loss and loneliness. Firstly, I want to express my greetings uh, uh, since Australia a little bit far so now, uh, last sometime, I I cannot uh, go there. Otherwise, you see, many my friend in Australia uh, and New Zealander as well. And I remember one special thing is the way to greet New Zealander touch nose. <laughs> so uh, when I uh, met a New Zealander, I also used to show my nose. But then meantime, I express, don't touch here. <laughs> <laughs> so many friends in New Zealand, as well as Australia, so I want to uh, express my greetings. 
and once we become a uh, friend, uh, knowing each other, that friendship still remain uh, the whole of our life. And from the Buddhist viewpoint, not only one lifetime, but once, you see, we develop certain sort of uh, very close sort of uh, connection. Uh, connection. That, that impact carry life after life. We believe that. So, uh, so many of these uh, Australian, my friend, uh, are sort of some mental level, some sort of imprint. No. You see, that carry life after life. So, in any way, uh, now your question. Now, today's world, although like uh, global, due to global warming, and you see, these are beyond our control. With that, in Latin America and in Australia, you see, bushfire. bushfire no. These now, uh, now become quite serious and quite often. These are uh, the nature sort of phenomena. And according Indian, uh, some ancient Indian text, the world eventually, you see, face uh, a city or say the violence, uh, then uh, uh, then 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 or say the uh, starvation, then uh, finally uh, die. So we are uh, some way. You see, we are uh, towards. You see, that period. And then some scientists about, you see, uh, global warming. Some, some scientists, you see, uh, told me within the next few decades, world uh, may face uh, or say, too much hot, and then those, or say the river, eventually uh, dry. That's a, it's a scientist, some my friend, scientist now say that. So this, and uh, Abhidhamma Koshakarika sort of description, is a quite, quite similar. So in any way, uh, logically, the uh, whole universe whole galaxies, uh, there is beginning. So logically, anything which have beginning, they logically end, come. So therefore, now uh, whole galaxies, now gradually, now ending, go that. So this nature phenomena, so we cannot do much. Now what we can do, and important is, while we are alive here, we should be happy life, peaceful life. That is important. The whole sort of galaxies now changing, and this uh, planet also now changing. And meanwhile, we fight each other. Uh, we create a lot of problem by ourselves. It is quite sad and actually illogical. Whole 
galaxy is now gradually ending. While we are alive, we should live happily, peacefully. Uh, so all this um, education is key factor. See, those people in the, in the past human history and even in the last century, now this century, there's a lot of sort of violence, uh, our own creation. So, so lack of understanding. Now we are uh, going to end. So while we uh, remain uh, one century, two century, we have to live happily. Uh, then, uh, basically, the entire sentient being, then particularly human being, we, everyone wants happy life. Happy means peaceful. Uh, so, now, uh, time come, we have to think seriously how to create this planet, this world, peaceful, harmony. Now here, uh, as some scientists say, we are social animal. Any social animal, is it the individuals uh, living very much depend on the community. It is true. So we human being, also social animal. Each human being, you see, they are sort of life. You see, entirely depend on the community. So, uh, from as soon as we born, we survived with mother's affection and our friend, family members' affection. So that's uh, not, not come religious belief, or not so through education. By nature, as soon as we're born, uh, you see, uh, helping each other, the child, I think we all, including we all, and myself also, you see, when we were uh, two, three years old, we don't care uh, what the other child, uh, believer or non-believer, or, you see, racially, this race or that race, we don't care. So long. You see, children smile, uh, play together, then we feel uh, very happy. So, young child, the oneness of human being, very much alive. Uh, so, uh, then gradually we join education. Once uh, in the class we join, then you see, make distinction. Or uh, also this belief, that belief, and also sometimes you see the different also the social status like that. Uh, that the, 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 these people are quite rich, we are poor. Like that, gradually we make uh, differences. All these differences, uh, not on the level of fun, for the fundamental level. Fundamental level, we are same human being, same human brothers, sisters. Uh, and uh, most important, brain, no differences of religious believer, non-believer, or this 
uh, color, that color. We all have same brain. With that, you see desire to happy, peaceful, all have same. Now we must, since I think we too much complicated uh, because we emphasize on secondary level of differences. Uh, so now problem which we create problem, including war, now I think enough. Now we should build happy one human society. I always is mentioning uh, oneness of seven billion human beings. We are mentally, physically, uh, emotionally, we all same. Uh, and we all, as a social animal, have the seed of a uh, sense of concern of others' well-being. Usually we call compassion, loving kindness. We all have. So now, uh, that's the basis. If we make effort uh, through education, we can build happy uh, humanity, compassionate humanity, on the basis of sense of oneness of seven billion human beings. So that's my sort of fundamental belief, and also make effort. So according to my own uh, experience, when we were in Tibet, you see, uh, we, we Tibetan, the outside world or something different. And especially we Tibetan, you see, consider those European big nose, we consider something different. <laughs> 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 then gradually we become refugee, come here. And many big nose become our best friend. <laughs> so, uh, so we really, you see, experience now come India as a refugee, then we uh, feel strongly oneness of seven billion human beings. Whether European, African, uh, you see, any Tibet, uh, any, any human being is the same. And physically also I think the same, basically same. Uh, I think we can uh, marriage uh, the different people, different color, different sort of shape of uh, face, but can live happily and produce nice children. Uh, so now, uh, the most important is uh, we, everyone, want happy life. No question. Now, uh, time come. We should make clear real happiness is not material, money, power. A real basis of happiness is inner peace. Whether believer, non-believer, uh, you see, everyone, if you if you have some inner peace, then that person uh, really achieve happy life, happy day and night. So now, question of happiness related with our emotion. Uh, all seven billion human beings, physically, mentally, emotionally, same. We all have or so the seed of all uh, good, good things as well as seed of negative emotion we all have. Now here, 
education, uh, very important. As I mentioned, uh, when children, young children, they don't care what different faith, what different nationality. Uh, once you see join education, then you see make distinction. So now in education, uh, we should as a day, uh, emphasis, as we emphasize, we are same human being. Uh, and a little, little differences are secondary level. Basically, we are same. Or uh, emotions, positive emotion, the destructive, negative emotion, we all have same. So since we all have same potential to use human intelligence through education. Uh, so now important is uh, in education, we should educate children. Uh, peaceful mind is key factor. So the, you know, the very basis of key, because the key factor about peace is uh, also the compassionate mind that I already mentioned. You see, from childhood, we received that. We survived on that basis. So, uh, so now, uh, in education, we can uh, emphasize more the how to build inner peace. Uh, we, we human being, not like other animals, we have this intelligence. So our intelligence you see, should utilize how to bring inner peace uh, and how to live humanity on this planet happily. All this related with our knowledge, brain. So basic nature of compassion, there. Now human intelligence must utilize, you see, the compassionate mind uh, is so important for individual level, family level, community level, finally, uh, world level. There are a lot of problems which we are facing in the past century also. Actually, our own creation. Uh, Basically, we are more compassionate uh, sentient being, but yet we human being become really troublemaker, uh, create a lot of problem to other animals, uh, other birds like that, and ourselves. You see, too much make division and fight. So therefore. Now, uh, in education, we should teach we all same uh, human brothers, sisters. We have to live on this planet. Now, there's not much uh, time. I think within the next uh, one or two centuries, then the whole world uh, may disappear. So while we uh, have sort of use this limited time. It's uh, illogical. Killing. Fighting. So therefore, now like uh, I say the, uh, the near mountain, one big rock falling. Uh, meantime, few people killing each other. Silly. So now we all, you see, facing that big rock now coming. So we have to uh, help each other uh, like that. So therefore, now the uh, uh, important is uh, the concept of oneness of seven billion human beings. Uh, different religion, different nationality, different color, these are secondary. 
So through education, uh, uh, we have to emphasize about oneness of seven billion beings. Then another thing, uh, these days I sort of mentioning the hygiene of physical, similarly hygiene of emotion. Oh, the, we take care about hygiene of physical. And also we learn through education. Now, there is not much sort of thinking or awareness, the hygiene of emotion. So now that uh, not necessarily religious belief, prayer, but without touching religion, use simply our, our common sense and how to build peace of mind. Peace of mind is the key factor for uh, internal for hygiene. So uh, it is not sort of sufficient. Uh, knowledge about hygiene of physical, not sufficient. Now hygiene of emotion must be there through education. So now, uh, basically now we are uh, going to end of this humanity or planet. So while we remain, few remaining decades, we uh, much better uh, with sort of uh, logically we live happily. Uh, and for that, we should create this now remaining century should be a demilitarized world, happy world, no fear. Wherever you go, same human being. You see, the, this is my our enemy, or due to religion or due to some other reasons, is mental creation. Basically, we have to live together. We are same human brothers, sisters. Uh, so through education, through use of intelligence on the basis of basic human nature as a social animal, more compassionate, now use this intelligence, we have to live together. So our weapons are no longer used, we have to uh, create demilitarized world. Uh, these, now, nowadays I'm always sort of expressing uh, like that. So now some questions. Yes, I think, uh, yes, thank you, His Holiness. I think I, I would like to bring Professor Hickey into the conversation. Uh, so, Ian, I mean, you he heard His Holiness talk about you know, that we are social animals and that our happiness depends on, you know, the community, us working together as a community. I know you've, I've heard you express, uh, you know, certain views about this in relation to the mental health crisis we're currently facing with the pandemic. How do you, how do you see it in your work now? Yes, Tony, I'd like to start by saying I'm sitting on the lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nations, for His Holiness, the First Nations here, who've been here for over 60,000 years in this country. And they never talk about individual mental health or well-being. The concept of social and emotional well-being being that shared between us. So to have the inner peace His Holiness was talking about, one can only have that if those that you are close to share that as well. You know, in the very Western traditions where we have a much more individual idea of inner peace or of restlessness, we tend to have two related concepts. One, of personal autonomy, the capacity to act in my life, that currently under threat by the virus and many other things, but the other of social connection, of cohesion, picking up his holiness's point. In the neuroscience that I'm involved in, in children, in uh, young people, in adults, the whole of brain development is driven by the social environment the emotional environment. So the brain we end up on the inside that we share in common is itself shaped by the emotional environment, by the point is holding us made, by the nature and quality of the connections. 
between people over that key period. And our capacity to cope with crises, whether they're the immediate ones like the virus, whether they are the long-term ones like the climate change and global challenges you, you mentioned, the war and, and threats these holiness has raised, and the issues that are playing out are mediated by the quality of those connections. We cope as groups. I'm not a person who likes the very American concept of individual resilience or of individual happiness as distinct from a collective. We are resilient when we cope as social groups. So I think the really big mental health challenge we face in the West at the moment, which existed prior to COVID. So in fact, the mental health of young people in Australia was deteriorating pre-COVID and has now got worse post-COVID, seems to be tied up in the deterioration in connection, in social relationships, the lack of understanding one between the other. I must say to His Holiness, I think I'm a person with a large nose, you know, that large nose. <laughs> the differences between those kind of groups and then the non-reconciliation of those things. We have struggled. We really struggle with notions of inclusiveness and collective action in the West where we have had a much greater focus on individual action. And I do worry we have a focus now on individual happiness or individual peace as distinct from what His Holiness has been reflecting on, which is the shared one. Just from an evolutionary point of view, it's very hard for humans to think of themselves as one of 7 billion or of 8 billion, because the smaller groups we are part of and grow and we're connected with, are, I think as this holiness reflected, they rely on experience. The education is largely by experience of close connection with others in childhood, with those around you, with those you're part of. If they are distressed, if they're, you're distressed, if they are supportive. So I think the issue, which I've heard his holiness speak about elsewhere, about the importance of education, I would add with that the experiential nature of that, not just the formal education to be logical about it, but the way in which the emotional environment in which children grow up and young people now find themselves. What I really worry about at the moment, Tony, is in the face of various crises, that people turn further inwards and only worry about themselves and those immediately around them and their safety. And we see behaviours that are happening. You know, we can see this in the dangers that will happen around the virus at the moment, shutting down communities, you know, who will get access to vaccines, there's resource kind of things, competition for resources again, breaking out fairly readily between in, in communities, in nations across the world, at a time when His Holiness has pointed out, we really desperately got to try and stop being such local animals and see ourselves as part of that bigger set of issues. And I think this is a real constant kind of struggle that I guess the perspective I would have, there is only really inner peace when that peace is shared with those who one is critically connected with. And it's very hard for humans to actually do that when they are fearful, when they are threatened, when they perceive that those or those close to them are under threat. So the COVID situation, unlike the climate change, which is long-term threat, the COVID situation is one of immediate threat. You know, you know people could be sick tomorrow and the fearfulness and, and distrust breaks out. So I think what I'd be interested in hearing the Holiness talk further about is, you know, how do people reconcile this? Because people are anxious, people are concerned, and we've seen reporting of that. People become less hopeful about the future in the face of the current situation because, in my view, we don't have those strong social connections that really drive mental health and well-being. And I think in the in the more in the Buddhist tradition, drive those things. In fact, you know, to some degree in the political discourse in Australia, we've seen a discounting of the notion of happiness again you know, as this thing from productivity or other sets of issues. So I think, you know, these are really live and ongoing issues, particularly in the societies in which we live, where not enough emphasis in development, in childhood, in education, but also really in our ongoing lives is, pay, is based on compassion, is based on connectiveness, is based on collective well-being, not simply the pursuit of individual happiness. Thanks, Ian. I mean, if you've got a question you could put to His Holiness around those lines. Yeah, so the issue of the education one that His Holiness raised, the educating particular issue, and particularly the emphasis he placed on development, because I think, of course, the hopefulness, and for those of us who are grandparents, the hopefulness for the next generation and the recurring generations is in the development of children as global citizens with this strong sense that my inner peace is shared with you, with your inner peace, independent of our physical characteristics or where we live as part of it. And it really, 
taking that educational theme around compassion further, how, how His Holiness would see that being played out or optimised in the current environment. Right. I often, you see, mentioning the spirit of European Union. Uh, the First World War, Second World War, French, uh, Germany, the arch enemy. Uh, but the time passes, the both sides, the feeling now no use the we german the uh, the french and each other the enemy that you see completely change i have one german professor when he told me when he was young french it, in the eyes, German, French is their enemy. Now that kind of thinking completely changed. As it is, the, another sort of example is Ardena, de Gaulle. During wartime, arch enemy. But after Second World War, they realized now no use, you see, negative attitude to each other. We have to live side by side. So under the leadership of Adana, uh, leadership of de Gaulle, now they initiated the European Union. So uh, through many decades, negative attitude then changed. At least the European Union uh, developed. As a result of European Union develop, uh, the last, you see, a uh, few decades, uh, no longer any danger killing each other. Uh, then, you see, the, uh, the modern world's concept, uh, democracy, so no longer kings or queens have absolute power. No. Now power should be hand of people. So democracy is developed. And then furthermore, you see the thinking uh, benefit for larger community, particularly poorer section. So, you see, uh, this, I said the socialism, also, you see, develop. So these are, according to the reality, I think the people's thinking, uh, thinking more and more the benefit of uh, larger community and particularly the working class people. So I myself, uh, as far as the economy, uh, uh, sort of system is concerned, I'm socialist. Uh, I re really uh, like it's a socialism, thinking, rest of the people, not a few individual billionaire. <laughs> 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 so uh, so the, the, the recent sort of the tendency, thinking about the right of majority of the people so these are nature sort of process. Now, uh, we further sort of advance. Now, national boundary is secondary, not important. Like European Union. Uh, so we in Asia or Africa or America, you see, thinking the uh, interest for or so the majority of the people not thinking few individual, few company like that. So therefore, eventually, uh, and then also you see, uh, now here, the gap, rich and poor, quite serious. 
so some individual enjoy a millionaire or billionaire. Uh, some people still remain poor. Once I noticed in Washington, say, most richest of the country, and then suburb, suburb red, uh, uh, Washington, some poor people, some black people, poor people there. So now, uh, this gap, rich and poor, is a global level or national level, in India also, you see, uh, uh, the poor uh, people and suffer, and especially you see the uh, those working class people, the female girls. This is too much exploitation. Uh, very, so we must make effort to reduce this gap, rich and poor. Uh, so all this, you see, thinking more sort of equal to everybody. Uh, firstly, uh, education and ideology. Uh, so so t- t- can, I, can I ask, in terms of the actions on the actions? <laughs>